Юнасе, я, я, мені, звичайно, легше українською, але я хочу, щоб ми Ні. розмовляли англійською. Mm-hmm. Без проблем, да, да, да. Я, я розумію. Але, але якщо я, можна, я трошки українською спочатку поясню, просто, mm-hmm. щоб мені легше. Так, так, так. Я прочитала ну, безліч інтерв'ю з вами, починаючи з 2014 року і до, там, mm-hmm. так, 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 так. до останніх. І тому я буду кілька питань задавати, базуючись на те, що ви відповідали. Ну, якщо це... То, звісно, я не проти. Супер. I'm Jonas Zoman, Ehrman in Swedish. I'm living in, in Lithuania, in, in Vilnius, where I am right now. I'm living here in Lithuania. I'm, I'm a quite known person, but for other reasons, first of all, I, I am a filmmaker. I am a translator. I'm a journalist. So I'm, I'm working all kinds of, of, of uh, things related to, to uh, well, you may say humanitarian matters, uh, culture, and 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 uh, so so I, I'm quite a known person in in, in Lithuania. Uh, when things started to uh, go bad in, in, in Ukraine, um, I was one of the, you may say, first responders from Lithuania. And uh, that for, for, for various purposes, reasons. I, first of all, of course, uh, I definitely immediately understood that the, the immediate the danger for Lithuania, for the Baltics, uh referring to what is ha- what was happening then in in Ukraine that would uh, Russia succeed in the, in Ukraine the a possible next target would be the Baltics so i i definitely i'm very aware of of, of uh, baltic history of of uh, somewhat at that point of ukrainian history we're talking about occupation oppression annexation uh et cetera et cetera fr- from the side of of uh, you must say soviet union slash russia uh, as one of the first responders from lithuania with a very very strong backup from 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 lithuania society um we were able to to do things uh as volunteers as supporters of the ukrainian armed forces back in 2014 we participated in several at several occasions in, in in crucial events such as the battle of, of Donetsk airport we were in Maltevo, and we were also in other places later on we were in Avdivka where we were able to provide uh, accurate and 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 and, and uh, relevant support to to the armed forces but we we've done it with with an accuracy we have been able to identify relevant uh, and and and, and uh, real, realistic support receivers uh, we're working with all kinds of units in the armed force of ukraine so over time yes we have gained a certain reputation may i say that that's probably how i can in sweden um i can say this that over the first phase up till the open russian aggression Switch were had a limited interest in what was going on. Uh, people knew about it, of course, but but it wasn't it wasn't something that really bothered Swedish society that much. And uh, I must say, honestly, even on the governmental level, it seems to me that that uh, Sweden was not uh, slightly worried. Yes, but not that they didn't really take these things seriously. That has changed a little. Um, uh, first, we must have, first of all, of course, mention the fact that uh, Sweden and Finland have have asked to join NATO, which is a significant change in the security environment in in the region. Uh, but also from 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 the public, from from society in general, we can feel that that an, a surge in interest and and and. and and we have, for instance, more sponsors now than we used to have um, from Sweden. And, and we are trying now slowly to increase this awareness in, 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 in Sweden and among, among the public. Um, because we, I feel that, that, that eventually even, even the Swedes have 
understood that 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 this is this is something you have to deal with. You have to do something about it. You know, can you tell me? I asked every Swede uh, uh, mm. with uh, whom I made interview here in Sweden, mm. why are you doing this for yeah. so many time uh, years, eight years? You dedicated your life, your time, your resources to Ukraine. Why you do this, and how mm. you can explain it for Swedes? Who are aware now and want to mm, yeah now. yeah uh, again we must first of all uh, take into consideration the fact that I'm I'm not living in Sweden I'm living in in the Baltics which of course is a very different situation that than, than in, in Scandinavia in Sweden maybe Finland an exception but but uh, again the situation in in Ukraine for people living here is outright dangerous. Uh, it may uh, worst case scenario the, these things may spread to to here and and, and we all see what Russia uh, is able is capable of doing. So as a, as a person living here, I'm Swedish but I'm living somewhere else. I'm also by the way, I'm also by now a Lithuanian citizen. I have dual citizenship. I was granted it's a kind of funny I was granted the citizenship by the uh, president of Lithuania, but mainly for my work in Ukraine, which is kind of <laughs> interesting. Yeah, uh, but uh, um, so so that is, of course, one one one. Uh, I, I'm defending I'm defending the country I'm living in. So so it's not only about Ukraine. I can give you a, more, a broader uh, uh, the, the Orange Revolution, for instance. I should be honest. Back in 2000, it didn't really bother me that much. Of course, it was an event; it, it was some tension, but it didn't really change anything. When when uh, I saw my dawn, and I, I saw, I'm sorry, I have a cat here, Juan, so so <laughs> we won't be in the picture. Uh, so, so, um, what, what happened? Uh, and Maidan, that was different. That was a very, very different feeling, a very different uh, understanding. Not, I mean, of course, from a Baltic Lithuanian perspective, because we had a similar situation back in the beginning of the 90s. So that's uh, one thing. But but it, it really was, it, it, you may say that uh, uh, if the Orange Revolution was more like a, internal, I don't know, we're not happy with the government, stuff like that. My thought was, was actually uh, people were not happy because the government canceled, so to speak, the the the, the promise to, to get close to Europe. And Europe posing an alternative to Russia, which is very important. Ukraine is faced with, with, with uh, has is facing choices here. And the Ukrainian people, Maidan, they, they, they made a choice. Up to that point, again, honestly, Ukraine didn't choose. They were kind of trying to be in between, you know, two worlds or something like that. And it it, it came up to this situation. So the, the political importance, I cannot uh, enough emphasize the, the importance of Maidan in this whole, whole uh, context. And of course, uh, then the Russian response to that, uh, and uh, the, the the rather confusing and weak response, initial response from from Ukraine that to me also was, was I mean, do don't you see that your country is being attacked by Russian Federation? I saw that at once. I just looked at these green green men in Crimea. I, I saw their guy. It was obvious that this is Russia. And uh, Ukraine didn't do anything, which was confusing uh, to people like me. And then in Donbass, you had a, a tense situation when eventually Ukraine started to fight back. And uh, uh, when Ukraine did so, uh, to a large extent, again, based upon uh, Maidan, because what happened in Maidan was very capable, strong people, they connected. And when when Russia attacked uh, Ukraine, they formed they formed units, they formed battalions, and 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 they went to 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 Donbas to 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 fight them. And uh, at that point, I'm gonna say I, I realized this is something again. This is uh, from my dawn. This is something else. 
they're actually uh, uh, countries taking up arms against uh, Russia, against, against the aggressor, and you have to help them. Yeah, they're, 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 I, have no, I have no choice, both from, from a moral perspective, maybe from a, from a personal, uh, I, I, li I like, I hate totalitarianism. I hate it. I cannot, <laughs> but, but I definitely uh, cherish and, and, and admire anybody standing up against it. So, and Ukraine did at that point. So, uh, and then of course, there are also more broader, I have many motivations for what I want to do. I have maybe 20 different motivations that that's, yeah. So I can, but it's also in the broader, the, the geopolitical context that uh, seeing how Russia has evolved in, into this monster that we're seeing today, a uh, totalitarian monster, it's, it's really hard to, to describe it in, in any other, other way. Unless you have to finish the monster, you have to, you have to kill the dragon, basically. And, and uh, uh, if the Ukrainians are up to the task, of course, they're going to help them. That that's, uh, goes without saying. We must. Uh, I think we all understand we cannot live on in Europe. It's Ukraine, or or and it doesn't really matter. We can live on with 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 this 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 crazy beast, uh, you know, as a neighbor. I mean, they they will just okay Ukraine, but they will come up with something else. They 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 cannot stop. They they will. They will just figure out other means to 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 create further terror, fear, intimidation. So we have to kill the dragon, and that thing I I, I really uh, I mean very very important, and, and that goes for for all of Europe. So so that as a Swede, as a Lithuanian, as a European, as I'm I'm, I'm all all my my you know, identities are, are 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 on the same page on this one. I see now in Sweden. A lot of announcements that Swedish uh, state authorities are trying to prepare people to the wars. So I see yeah. that uh, some centers, I don't remember the name, that they like uh, ask people, come to us and tell about your profession, how you can be useful to your country if the uh, yeah. situation will be worse. You yeah. were in Ukraine during all of these years and yeah. you see how, how terrible and awful Russia made with our country yes could you uh, could you motivate swedes uh to stop putin in ukraine uh, because uh, if they uh, will prepare mm. on their territory so they are waiting that he will come to them but it's not the good uh, country, uh I, I i think well uh, of course it's it's a, the same debate goes on on in the baltics uh, the same debate goes in in as in poland and, and i mean Sweden is not unique in any way. There is a, there's a fear of, of, of war. Uh, I wouldn't say it, it's it's somewhat different. I, I I remember the Cold War. I remember you know Soviet Union and 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 this this kind of situation where this this uh, looming threat of some kind of war was always and we it was normal so to speak. And now we have a situation where where we must understand that it's very important to understand that. Europe, uh, more generally, not only Sweden, over the last decades has turned itself into, a, so to speak, a, a, a territory of peace where, where war is not an option, that you have to solve problems with other means, diplomacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the thought of war in, in Europe is, is very far away, still, still. Nobody's shooting at Europe. I mean, West. I mean, uh, European Union, etc. And and uh, um, I think it's very hard for for both both governments and societies to come to terms to 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 understand the concept of of the possibility that that we might have to 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 fight a war. Uh, which is, I see for for these efforts, it, it's it's a good thing, but also it's, it's being a, it's some kind of to me it's a little panic. It's a little you know random, and and it's it's very sometimes very emotional, and I don't think that is the proper way to react as as a state to these things. I think that um, you I mean again I, I'm a very I'm a very romantic and sometimes very emotional person, so it's not about that. Uh, I see the. the videos from Kherson and I cry basically because it's so so uh, so moving 
But on a state level, on a state level, you have to think about these things in different ways. First of all, uh, whatever you do is in Ukraine, helping Ukraine is more efficient at the point. It cheaper, again, which is not another. Uh, I, I would probably say any efforts provided to Ukraine, w- would it be military or or, or, or other or humanitarian, is much much cheaper than anything you 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 would have to do if you would be forced to do it at home. By supporting Ukraine, you can actually help to stop this madness. If Ukraine wins, if Ukraine actually has, we have a clear Ukrainian win uh, with with a Russia that has shown us all this. It's not it's not able even to to notwithstanding all this boast boosting about you know how great they are, they're not able to to even take on Ukraine. We have to be in Ukraine in all possible ways. It can be buying a generator or something for for some you know somebody or. It could be on a more uh, governmental level, with improving, in, including serious measures. I can just give you one example. Sweden have very, very powerful and capable weapon systems. Let's say the art, artillery system. It should be in Ukraine. It should be there doing its job. Sweden has to understand that it has to prepare for crisis. Not only in Ukraine, I mean, there are also, we have seen there are other challenges. There are, you know, pandemics, climate, uh, other kind of, 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 of problems that may rise that as society as a whole has to be prepared. Sweden, Swedes have a problem. They live in a very happy place. And, and, and that is, of course, very nice. And, but but you, you cannot forget about the shadows. I can give you one example of, of, of a very, very Swedish uh, that over time I have started to cherish more than I, I did before. It's Astrid Lindgren, you know, the, the child, children's book writer. Uh, and you know her stories about all, all these characters, Emil and, 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 and et cetera, and Ronnie. And, and they're, they're, they're great to read and there are lot, lots of humor in this, but always there's a dark side. There's always a shadow of some kind sometimes that you have to stand up you have to 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 face challenges you have to take risks you have to be brave it's always books so i i think uh, her being very very formed by by her experience from the second world war and and where she, i mean you can see her writing she was very 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 uh, concerned about about what was happening we have to read or ask for maybe a little little closer to 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 give answer in a swedish way as a swede which is in my case also i always i was i was raised i grew up i mean i can make a difference it's not like you know oh you you're nobody and you can't do anything that is not true and as a swede knows that deep down you have been formed and raised in 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 that in that way so 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 that's a positive thing uh I can give you one one very positive example. We have, uh, uh, as you know, I think there are Swedish officers leaving the army to go to Ukraine to to help to fight. Why it's important to support uh, Swedish or Europeans guys who want to fight with the Ukrainian army? Why it's it's important and maybe how do you think it's is it useful such support or maybe it's better to be uh, volunteer. Uh, it's necessary. Uh, it, it's 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 crucial and it's very useful. Very useful. Uh, first of all, we have to understand, and this is a very very important thing to understand. We are at war and with Russia. Okay, it may be in Ukraine. There may be no no Russian tanks or troops or whatever in Sweden or or somewhere. We are at war. Russia is challenging everything we stand for, for territorial integrity, uh, democracy, freedom of speech, uh, uh, the, 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 the agree- international agreement, challenging everything that, we, uh, that our civilization stands on, everything, every single thing. And if we don't deal with that, if we let it pass, let it go somehow, again, in Ukraine or, or, or also in, in other ways, 
we will have serious problems in the future. What will happen when somebody else, China or, or, or some, some other forces come and, and, and tells us how things are supposed to be and, and, and gives us some, some ultimatums and what happens then? So we have we have to change it. We have to take the fight. We have we have no choice. I am all for sending uh, troops to Ukraine from Europe, from NATO, from the U.S. I'm not again. I'm not talking at this point about uh, you know riflemen going to the front and fight with the, because Ukrainians can do the fighting. But you need maintenance. You, you need liaison. You need, you need the logistics. You need all these things. That, and so, so to me, it's it's a very it's very frustrating to see that this this hesitation not not to do that. But at this point, um, anybody from Europe or 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 somebody else that goes to 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 Ukraine to help the Ukrainians to to fight to support them is is uh, a source not only of direct support but also of a better understanding of what is going on, what Russia is up to. The enemy. How can you counter? How can you fight that kind of enemy uh, in this war, or maybe in another war? And also to to, to establish and to, to to demonstrate solidarity, just to demonstrate that, that basically we are there. I am planning. I was in European Union uh, Parliament a couple of days ago, and we received a European Union awards, a citizenship award, and and I, I told them provocatively a little of that next time I go to Ukraine I will to the front line I will bring a European Union flag and I will I will show it together with the support that we are because we are a part of European Union I have the as a citizen I have the moral right to do that and I think it's also starting to get politically uh, uh, suitable to do that we have to show that we're there I yeah. saw that you got a lot of such like uh, science yeah. of uh, Respect. Uh, what does it mean for you personally? Uh, well, on the one hand, it's it, uh, yeah, it's nice. Of course, I'm I'm grateful, and it's it's very 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 uh, it's it's a very nice thing. It's very very pleasant, and of course, a sign of of uh, of, of recognition. So I wouldn't say uh, it means nothing. No, no, no. It's it's it, it's a it's a it's a. I see the importance of this as a. Also, a way to communicate that you're being appreciated by the European Union's Parliament, for instance, about this is this is important. I must say, I'm, I'm more happy about the ones that the organization get. Like we, the, the one in in Parliament was for you for our blue yellow the organization, not personally. I, I like those better. Uh, though I understand people say I'm the face, etc. So I, I can understand that too. It's it's not like. Uh, um, I, many thoughts around me. There are many, many people who also deserve these uh, recognition and 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 the awards and whatnot. And they maybe are not. So I, I'm definitely trying sometimes to give give ideas that there. I, I don't really feel I I, I don't really need them. So that's not something like like a. But I, I appreciate it. And there are some some a few medals that I really appreciate. I can give you one example. Uh, I am the only foreigner that received the medal for the defenses of Avdiivka, right? Yeah. So, so that is, of course, that's an amazing. I mean, uh, we were there during the most horrible parts, and and we 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 helped. We did. We did. We provided drones and 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 other things. And and uh, at that point, you didn't think about medals. I can't believe and tell you that, but but but. <laughs> But sure, I mean, so so yes, it's, it's a sign of appreciation, and of course, I'm I'm very very grateful for it. Maybe you can give some advice or like share your experience with new volunteers organization here mm -hmm. in Sweden. Yeah. I saw a lot of them. I saw yeah. such emotional people who want to help Ukrainians yeah. in Sweden and in Ukraine, and I see how they can burn out. You know, you, yes, you have. You have so long way during eight years, and now they have this shorter pass, uh, like eight months, and mm. they sometimes get tired, or society get tired about this yeah. topic. How can you give them advice? How they can like uh, fool their inner resources, their energy, where they can find motivation for a marathon? 
Uh, well, uh, I should be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm a little exhausted myself at the moment. It has been very, very tough, uh, uh, eight, almost nine months now. And uh, so I definitely understand anybody who is feeling, you know, uh, some fatigue or some, some. So it's, it's normal. I mean, it's, first, it's normal. It's nothing. Oh, I'm not up to the task. I'm not to feel fatigue, to feel, feel, uh, it's, it, it's, it couldn't be different. You could not, you not expect it, expect anything else. Emotions are very important and very, especially at the beginning when you, you have to need it like, like to kickstart this, this whole thing. What is very important, very important. It's a, it sounds maybe a little banal, but to create a great team. Of, of people uh, that you can you can you can all do your different tasks you 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 have a, a connections between yourself the, the team is is crucial you cannot do these things alone it's impossible uh, eventually you will run into uh, matters that will slow you down and uh, uh, i can give you one example it's very 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 uh Important. It doesn't seem that it, it's, of course, the, the all the documentation of what you're doing in different ways, for public purposes, for for internal purposes, for 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 uh, uh, purposes of other like tax, you know, representatives or whatnot. And somebody has to deal with that. Um, you cannot be uh, you cannot be all over the same place. Uh, in my case, I can give you one example. I said I'm I'm a great leader. I'm saying myself, I'm a great leader. I, I can definitely inspire and, 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 and go ahead, but I'm less uh, efficient manager. So, so that means that, that I have uh, pr uh, given these tasks to somebody else. As an NGO, as somebody working with the support of, of the public, of, of, of society, you have to do marketing. You have, it's, it's not like, Oh, it would be cool, you know. Where you have to show what you're doing. You have to uh, think of creative ways to explain to 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 the public what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why they should care, why they should be involved. I would say in Lithuania, this task is a little easier than say in Sweden because people here understand. People here definitely they they, they we have, for instance, a short phone number. You can all, you can contribute five euros a month, about fifty Swedish crown a month, and we have many 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 people doing that, and they just do it once, and yes, automatically it continues. Uh, we have other uh, similar things on the internet that you can do the same thing. We have, uh, and you have you have to think in this case in this kind of situation you have to think long term. Uh, it's hard to, to think long term time when you know we had these all these crazy things happen every day. Good things, bad things, horrible things. So so um but you have to think long term. And and that is uh for that you, you need sometimes maybe to to talk to others. Not only it's very easy when you are in, in this kind of when you get involved, it's, you're busy and you see your 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 world and you you're working with some helping the people. But you need perspectives. You need perspectives. Uh, you need advisors. Maybe you, you need people from other who are not involved directly. For instance, uh, I'm, I'm I'm connecting with the, in Sweden with Swedish businessmen. They have a different understanding of things. They're they're more you know business minded. I said I see how useful that has been to provide new perspectives, to give you ideas of long term efforts you can do. And, 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 yeah. Yunus, may I ask you, um, in one interview you told that uh, you see that in Ukraine, uh, state authorities sometimes or often like transfer their responsibility to volunteers. Yes. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I think that in Sweden, I see the same. <laughs> uh, authorities tend to, they have a special mind, sound mindset. They're dealing with, you know, with, with the, uh, plans, agreements, budgets, of course. And when something unexpected happens, well, unexpected, well, yeah, I mean, it's a joke now that, that uh, uh, I mean, for instance, for, 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 for Ukrainian authorities, there are two, two surprises. There was the Russian attack 
and the whimper. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, that, that's um, it's a, it's a kind of bad joke, but you, you have to understand that, that, that authorities, they don't like surprises. Honestly, in Ukraine, at points, our organization take government responsibilities. We provide things, including military items that the government should be able to provide, but they are not for, for whatever purposes. And it has happened several times. Uh, we are getting, uh, you know, we, we are supporting let's say, anti-drone systems, extremely sophisticated systems from, from our end. And, and we see that often we are faster, we are more accurate, provide the people who are actually in the fight, uh, whereas the system is more slower, more, shall I say, you know, no, not, 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 not as fast as, 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 as it should. In war and in crisis, speed matters. How fast you are matters a lot. If you can do it today or in a week or in a month, it matters a lot. Uh, so uh, I can tell, I mean, definitely all this experience over these years, crisis management, uh, uh, the relationship between, um, you know, civil society and, and authorities, how to actually get an effect, how to, to uh, you know, the endurance to be able to stay in the long run. And, and we have vast experience in that field. And, and uh, so I, I can give you one example. I, I'm quite open about this. We, we have gathered approximately 35 million euros during this period of time, which is a lot. But we are keeping about 5 million of these as a reserve. We are not giving, yes, we are not providing, because with a, if something really bad happens, that we will be able to provide support here and now without asking anybody to do it. So, so that is something that we are, we are, we are creating an old strategic reserve, so to speak. And I think that the same that that uh, I, I definitely see the need for for authorities to think about similar things. You need strategic reserves. You cannot do every and how to fix that. How how to because when bad things happen, you have to ask any, anybody to help. Well, that's, that's a tricky one. I want to ask you uh, one question. I, sorry uh -huh. if it will be maybe painful or unpleasant yeah. for you. About yeah. this uh, case with CBS video, Army yeah. Ukraine, and these of quotes of your... Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. It's, it's, of course, I understand the question. Do you see the changes in Ukrainian army and in Ukrainian uh, state attitude to this help, uh, weapons help from Europe? Can you trust more uh, now? Definitely, yes. Uh, I will pray... Uh, Again, I always say that my assessment at that point, about two months into the conflict, were probably not that much off. I still think that I was pretty pretty correct about it. Now, over after again several months, this has improved greatly. I think there still are issues. Uh, I think some th sometimes there are things that that are not perfect. We are providing our support directly to the front line either ourselves or with some extremely trusted partners. I would say we have an efficiency of, I, I guess here a little bit, I would say 90%, maybe more, which is very, very much, very high in, 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 in a war. Uh, and uh, to actually, uh, yes, of course there are issues that there's still, but so send in your guys, send in your logistic guys, send in your, your maintenance guys, send in your liaisons uh, to, to figure it out. On the other hand, many things are working. I mean, there, there. I personally, I've seen the artillery. I, I've seen the high mars. I've seen the many things that I've seen the the uh, armored personal carriers. So, so yes, I mean, it, it is working, and, and and as as maybe as good as you can expect in a, in a situation like this. But you have to you have to become better. You have to be more efficient. You also have to know what kind of support is supposed to. I'm talking to, to commanders, I'm talking to, to various units, and sometimes they ask for things that are not there. And I do not really understand why, because they should be there. That there's not something really complicated to, 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 to acquire. If I understand right, that you help Ukraine and Ukrainian army and our people yeah. because you believe that we can win. Oh, yeah, I know you can win. I know you can. It's just not believe. I, I know. 
uh, that way, I can tell you when that became clear to me, really clear. Uh, that was after the, the Battle of Avdiivka. When I saw uh, how the Ukrainian armed forces, uh, to me, at the first time, they were able to systematically, in, in a comprehensive manner, to actually withstand the Russian fierce aggression at that point. And they, they stood their ground. They didn't retreat. So back in 2016, and after that, I know that Ukraine can win this. I have, I have no, no doubt. So much more, of course, with the support of, 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 of the West and NATO and, and whatnot. Uh, but that said, I mean, we should not rest our case. We have to keep doing what we're doing. And of course, we also have to think about the results, the effects in the future. Let's say that Ukraine, uh, relatively speaking, uh, they, 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 they win this war, they, 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 they defeat Russia. What happens then? We're talking about, you know, we, do you think reconstruction and everything? Yes, it's a, but, but there are many dangers in this. I do not, this is very important again, I do not fully trust the Ukrainian political establishment. Ukraine is, is, a, is a democratic country. But the democracy in Ukraine must become much, 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 much better. The governance but has to become better. Otherwise, we may end up with a, with a very, very weird political situation uh, with, with, with another other potential dangers in, in here. Yes, now, of course, we have to defeat the Russian military. Yes, of course. But that's not the whole, that's not the whole story. And uh, we have to think about what well, Russia, after a, a defeat, what, what, what will they do? What, 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 what will they think? Where will they go? Will they keep, um, you know, the, this thought of, of, of revenge for us, et cetera, et cetera. You, you, you cannot keep Russia as an eternal enemy. Uh, and, and that is, you know, for, for, for we, we have to, to for, for various purposes. So, so you have to be able to think in many dimensions. So, so uh, at this point, right now, it's Slava Ukraine. You know, it's, it's just, you know, Slava Nazi. And I have, I mean, I'm just happy to hear when they have been able to, 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 to take, the, take, take territories back and to, to eliminate Russian troops. But I also think, try to think in a broader and a deeper uh, perception, Ukraine uh, needs... Uh, uh, you know, some kind of friendly or, or, or at least neighborly relationship with Russia uh, for, for, for being able to, for a sustainable development, et cetera, et cetera. That is a very challenging task. It is. And uh, I'm not saying, you know, become brother. No, 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 no. But we need, as an diplomatic on an international level, we, we have a rather good example. It's, 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 it's Germany. Uh, it would, I mean, the horrible Nazi regime, which was in some ways even worse than, 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 than uh, the Russian regime, similar, but, but and, 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 and we were able to, to turn that into something, something, something positive. Uh, so, but, you know, uh, this is maybe beyond the scope of this, this conversation, but as you wanted to mention it, I'm thinking about these things, that it's something that, that is, 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 uh, uh, Putin has to go, obviously. I mean, we, 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 he has to go. He has to 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 be uh, taken away. He's is, uh, in, and his environment. And then you have to see what we can do with the rest. On the other hand, let's let's turn this perspective differently. I mean, from a Lithuanian perspective, we must understand that for states like Lithuania, like the Baltics, like Poland, a stable, secure, prosperous, friendly Ukraine. It's a bigger security guarantee than even NATO. Uh, Russia, I mean, honestly, Russia is a, is a, this is a nation of, of, of sheep. They're cowards. Uh, they have no understanding of how to post their own regime, providing these obviously very harmful decisions, even to Russia. And what they said, the mobilization, it's harmful even to Russia itself. And and the the attitudes uh, the the when you see that seventy percent something it seems approve in some way of, of the war and uh, so my 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 I don't have big hopes but I I need to have I need to keep the hope there.